My name's Andy Coxall. I'm the Acquisition and Build Director here at BA Systems Maritime. Uh, I'm here today on Ghana Country and I welcome you to a tour of the Osborne shipping operation. G'day, it's uh, Commodore Scott Lockie. I'm the Director General for the Hunter Class Frigate Program and it's great to be here with Andy today to take you on a tour of the Osborne Naval Shipyard. This is where we're building the Hunter Class Frigate, which is going to be the Navy's next generation warship. And it's a privilege for us to be able to show you through the shipyard today and the show you the progress that we're making on the construction of the first of our six ships. We're at the start of the shipbuilding process here now. This is where all the steel arrives from our suppliers. We get suppliers from all over the world, but mainly from Australia, and in particular from InfraBuild and also BlueScope. The steel that we use on this program has been optimised for the design of the ship. There are over 55 different plate thicknesses of steel that we use in the ship, and a heap of different profiles and bold bars and you'll see all of that as we head on into building 20 now. We're now at the surface treatment line, the very first stage of the construction process. Here, the raw steel, once it arrives, is painted with a pre-construction primer. We're now in the main part of building 20. You'll notice there's a lot of steel around. All of that steel is going to be used in the construction of the first ship. Here, at this particular station, the steel is blasted and then it is actually marked with an inkjet for a template of all the bits that we need to cut out. Also at this point, it is marked with identification numbers which show where the piece of steel will fit in the overall ship bed. We've just walked past the edge beveling station over here. The edge beveler is a unique piece of technology because it allows different thicknesses of steel to be welded all together. The steel, after it's been edge beveled, goes into the one side of welder and this machine allows the steel to be welded all the way around without having to rotate the steel, which is the way it would have been traditionally done and is clearly much more efficient. Other machines in this part of the production uh, include the stiffer mounted welding portal and the micro panel line, both of which are really important for producing the early fabrication of the units that we're about to go and see on the unit line. As we go through the tour, you're going to see some really good examples of mobby technology in action. What's interesting about the piece of equipment behind me, the Neil and Press, whilst new, it's actually the same way that cold steel has been formed, probably since when the Titanic was built. So you have a great combination of cutting edge technology and our people here at Osborne being able to use artisan skill set to really showcase their capability. The Neil and Press is an amazing piece of kit in that it can apply up to 600 tonnes of pressure and that is used to form cold form uh, complex um, geometric shapes. If you imagine we're building this ship much like a child would play with Lego, we build the ship firstly into units. In total there are 78 units in the ship which will become 22 blocks which will eventually become one ship in building 22. At the moment we're standing in front of the unit line. The unit line is sort of like a car production line but on a much, much bigger scale. The units, as they proceed down the unit line, progressively gets built up and fitted out with a little bit more of the fabricants that are required to form the unit. You'll see behind me a robot welder um, being used. We use a lot of robot welding on the unit line and that takes a lot of pressure off human welders and it reduces the amount of time that our welders are spending down on their hands and knees doing the welding. The units actually go down the unit line upside down. We turn them right side up over in building 21. The units, when they leave the unit line, actually leave here on what are called self-propelled motorised transporters. They're one of the coolest remote control cars you'll ever see. This is where the units arrive by SPMT, as Scott said earlier, and the units are consolidated into blocks. I would mentioned before that the units come out the unit line upside down. This is where we turn them right side up. And happening behind us right now, we've got unit UC11T, which is part of block four, about to be flipped over and turned right side up, and then it'll be positioned next to its partner unit to form block four. A really exciting day to be here in the yard, so this happening live. Yeah, and once that, this unit is consolidated, it essentially means we're building the ship from the bottom up. We create what we call a canoe, that allows us to put all the major heavy propulsion machinery and shaft line into the ship prior to building everything above it. Here we are in building 22, which is the largest building at the Osborne South Naval Shipyard. The scale of this building is phenomenal. It's almost 200 metres long, it stands 50 metres high, 
number of 200 tonne cranes in this building, it really is the centrepiece of where we start to assemble the ship. Adelaide's a fantastic place to live, but you can imagine in the summer when the temperatures out here at Osborne can approach 35 to 40 degrees, how important it is to keep as much of our work under cover. The steel in the direct sunlight can reach extreme temperatures and actually expand the ship and shrink the ship. None of that we have to deal with here with Building 22. Sitting behind us right now are three of the prototype blocks that have been produced over the last couple of years on the program. They're prototype blocks, they won't be used in a ship, but the quality has been amazing and we've learned so much through the prototyping process. We're really proud to be building what we consider to be the best anti-submarine vessel in the world. And to deliver that to the Australian Navy and to the Australian people is a project of which we're incredibly proud of. Our Navy and our nation need to be able to protect our waterways. That's part of protecting our way of life here in Australia. What we're going to deliver with the Hunter Class Frigate is uh, very important to protecting our way of life. So it's great to be a part of continuous naval shipbuilding and establishing that sovereign capability once again here at Osborne.